back from vacation and this is part six of my building the chaperone the 1884 steamer and i've had a little bit of time to work on it but i want to talk about the ship in general especially if you're a newer ship builder and whether this is something you might want to consider building the only reason i say yes is because it has some challenges but there are some other areas that are easy when you get into model shipbuilding, planking is one of the most difficult things. And this ship was an easier uh, ship to plank. It gives you a little bit of the experience, but not a lot of the hassle that goes with planking a ship. The other thing is there's not a lot of rope work. There's a small amount. And again, when you get to one of the tall ships, you can really get bogged down in rope work and, and all the yards and the lines and things like that. It does have some challenges, but that also can be good. When you get into model shipbuilding, you'll find out that it is not necessarily step by step. You have to observe, you have to read a little ahead, you have to really examine the visual instructions, and you need to plan your way as you go. And I do think this ship does offer that challenge. It is a challenge, but that's what shipbuilding actually is. So for me, it's been very enjoyable. It's not going to take me as long as some of the tall ships that I started building. I recommend it as, I guess I'd call it a, an intermediate beginner level ship. So I hope that you find that helpful. It does require that you be precise in measurements and cutting. And I think that's an asset because when you move forward from here, by learning those skills, it'll be a big help. Before I get too far along, I wanna give a shout out to Buckman's uh, Model Mania. And he is building the same ship. You should check it out on YouTube. He started this ship 10 years ago. Did part of it, got a little frustrated, put it away and recently brought it back out. He's doing some amazing work on his ship. He is so detailed and I, words do not express the uh, perfection that he's put into his model. Much better than mine, hands down. So check it out, Buckman's Model Mania on YouTube. And uh, I wanna thank him because he's made it so some of the errors that I would have made, maybe I didn't make because the heads up he gave in his video. So let me take you on a journey on what I accomplished in the last week and a half or so and where I plan to go from here. Next area I'm going to work on are these bull rails that go across and there's a real small piece that attaches to each one of those supports. Before I can secure this upper deck or the hurricane deck, I think is what it's called. Because I had done my own planking on here, I have to make room. I have to reopen those holes, which I've done. Fortunately, I have this little square file and it happens to be the same diameter as these supports. So I've gone through and I've cleaned each one of those out. Then when I put this deck on, this is going to need to stick up through here a sixteenth of an inch. So I made them a little long and I can either push them down lower at the bottom part or I'll just uh, cut that top off so it leaves. To get these supports in place, what I've been doing is taking it up and through the top first. And then coming back and putting it in the bottom. And you want a sixteenth of an inch left up here. So I'll measure that later because I can adjust it, sand it if I need to. So these will get glued on each side and then those slats will go across. You can see these in place now, and I decided not to paint them because I wanted to be able to see where they were. So I left them just the natural color. And to do that, I just took wood glue, spread it out on this piece of paper, thinned it out with my finger, and then I just lay it on there, get the glue on, and then just uh, put along that, that inside edge there. And you might think it would be easier to put these on first, but I needed them an equal distance up from the floor. So that's why I waited until now. Then I can just uh, level them out with the deck 
and they'll be spaced just right. So that's working pretty well so far. It is a little time consuming, but that's part of model ship building. Something I caught myself at at the very last moment is these only go to where this part of the building jets out, that first post. They do not go any further. I had put two or three on here before I caught that. But it's very clear in the uh, blueprint diagram that these rails only go to here. So I'm done with this side. I will attach these on the other side. Cutting each one of these individual planks uh, has proven out to be a real challenge because this piece that uh, supports it is so thin, this cut has to be exact. So what I've been doing is taking my gauge, measuring the distance, cutting a little bit long, and then taking the sandpaper and slowly sanding it until it's an exact fit. Also, each panel is slightly different size, and that may just be me, or it's because it's so minute that that's just the nature of, of the build. That being said, once they are in place, they look, they look pretty good. I just finished these guardrails, and it was quite a bit of work. You have to measure the distance between each one of these because they're just slightly off. And these, like I said before, have to be exact. But I did get them all in place. I think that looks pretty good. My next dilemma is I secured this deck in place. Remember down underneath, I put those black straws to hide my wiring. Well, I forgot to put holes here and pull that wiring up. I discovered one of them over here sneaking out of the stairs. That's how I caught it. Now, I still have power up here that I can get off of these, but I think I can look through and cut some holes here and fish those wires out. So that'll be my next challenge, and that was my error. I was able to locate the wiring that I needed to, to bring up the electricity to this deck so I can put some lights around. And I'm going to put a false floor so that I can raise the floor and have all the wiring underneath it. I'll just raise it a quarter of an inch. And then I'm going to fill this area with uh, tables, chairs, and I made two grand pianos. So this is gonna be very formal and no one will ever know but me, but I also put strings inside the pianos. If you can see that inside there. And I will put some lights, candle lights on top of them. And we'll just have dueling grand pianos. On this upper deck, there's a curved piece here. And the instructions have you take a pen knife and gouge into the lines that are already there. If you cut all the way through, I've already thought this through, you could tape or glue, I should say glue, you could glue a piece of material back here or paper and that'll hold it in place because you're going to have to scrape almost all the way through. The back part has a similar thing and it, it warns you not to use liquid to bend it. I tried a combination of both and I've decided probably not to use the liquid on the front, I'm gonna try it dry. We'll see how this ends up when it dries, but see, I broke off this piece. So I'll, I'll uh, glue that back on. I've gone ahead and used the pin knife and cut all, almost all the way through those. Now you could use needle nose pliers or your hands. I think I like my hands better, my thumbs, because I can get a feel for the wood bending. And this where it just seems like a little moisture would help it, but it'll also, you run the risk of warping the wood. There will be some planks glued on the outside of this also, so that'll help hold it all together. And I can kind of feel the, the wood fibers kind of splitting away. So that's that piece there. So I don't want to bend it anymore. It'll break off. This is soldering iron, it is hot, but I'm not putting any moisture on it, and I'm hoping this will help me start that bend. I'm 
that can get pretty hot so you have to be careful I do think it is helping the bend a little let me that's one of those cases where I wish I had another hand these pliers have a curved section there that is kind of helping a little the pressure where I want it I put a little bit deeper cuts in there and between the needle nose pliers and my fingers I'm getting them to bend here's what I was talking about this is a piece of cotton cloth off an old t-shirt probably and I'm gonna brush on some wood glue put some wood glue on my curved wood I think that'll give me the strength that I need to be able to bend that and keep it in place. Here you can see I've glued that material on the back and I think that's going to give me the flexibility that I want to stress that wood a little bit if I need to. So I went ahead and did it on all of them, including this section that goes back here on the back of the ship. So I think that cloth is a good idea to give me that flexibility that I want to make that curve. So that's how you get those bends, and then once I glue the planking on the front of that, I may round it off more using some sandpaper. I've got some of the furniture started. Let me give you a hint here. I can find got some chairs, and for outside, for someone wanting to leisure on the outside and look at the water. I made a couple of park benches. That's some of my ideas for the future, but I think this is a good point to end part six to give you an idea of, of where I'm at and the current status of the build. So that's it for this segment. This is Boiler Dan One, and as always, thanks for watching.